What is up everybody? Today I am going to be doing another video for our bait series. Um, one of the most frequently asked questions that I've gotten in the last few months was how do you freeze bloodworms? Um, if you watched any of these videos that I'm putting up here, um, you'll notice that the bait we were using in the winter and early spring was frozen bloodworms and we were catching stripers, perch, catfish, bluefish, just a variety of other species. And a lot of people were reaching out saying that they didn't know you could even freeze bloodworms. Um, personally, I do, I do this right before the winter. Um, it's very difficult to find certain baits during the winter time because most tackle shops in my area are closed. Um, especially live bait, soft plastics, jigs, hooks, you know, any type of terminal tackle is easy to really get any time just because of, uh, the internet and, you know, the accessibility of all the terminal tackle online and also in other stores. All right. So one of the things you might be asking yourself is why in the world would you freeze blood worms? Now, a few reasons. First, they are super expensive to buy, um, each week. I don't know how much blood worms cost around you guys, but, um, they're, $15 a dozen for regulars, and then apparently now it's $20 for jumbos, which growing up, I never knew there were size difference. They, they were just blood worms. You, you got a dozen blood worms, it was six bucks. Now it's, you got to take out like a reverse mortgage or a loan just to buy a couple dozen blood worms. So main reason why I do freeze them too, if I buy a dozen to go fishing and, you know, only use a few, um, I don't want to waste them and throw them in the trash. Uh, if you've ever kept bloodworms in your fridge before, you know that the shelf life of them is not great. And they go from being, you know, lively, juicy bloodworms to, you know, soup in a matter of days, is, which is kind of crazy. But the other reason, too, why I like to use um, or why I like to freeze bloodworms is wintertime in a pinch, you know, go perch fishing, striper fishing, any type of uh, fishing in my area that requires blowworms. Um, it's my go-to. They're in the freezer. Grab them and go. Um, cause the winter months can be pretty tough to, you know, come across fresh and live bait. So it's always great to have it in the freezer. So all I'm going to be doing today is just showing you guys the simple technique of, you know, preparing these bloodworms before we freeze them so that they're uh, in good shape to be used in the winter and spring. So let's start with step number one. All right. So first thing is there's not much you need. What I'm going to show you is just the essential stuff that you need. I have a box right here. Got it. Uh, Sam's club. That's where I'm going to be sticking these blood worms in during the one hour wait period. Um, but the other things you need is just non iodized salt, which we have right here and paper towels and Ziploc bags or however you want to freeze them if you're going to, you know, preserve them another way. But, and then the most important thing, blood worms. Now, I was very fortunate. I went to go buy some blood worms uh, yesterday and the guy, at the local tackle shop asked me what I was using them for. And I told him, you know, perch, striper. And he said that, you know, he was going to end up tossing these guys in the next few days because I guess they haven't been selling them as much. So I ended up getting this flat of blood worms for a very cheap price. But uh, it gave me the great idea of, you know, let me preserve and freeze, you know, all of them. I believe there's like three or four dozen, which that'll get me through a, a very big part of the winter that, you know, we struggle to find fresh and live bait. But Let's get to step number one. All right, so it's a pretty simple process. The first thing we're gonna do is take uh, paper towels and we're going to add them to this box right here. We're gonna line, I'm just gonna rip a few off real quick. It doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to coat the bottom. Um, and the reason why that we're coating it with paper towels is when we start putting these worms and you want to make sure you're getting all the grass off them. Once we put them into this box, the next step is going to be adding the salt. Now, 
big key with that is if you're using iodized salt, um, it's not as good as the non-iodized salt for what we're trying to do. Um, the bloodworm's natural reaction when you add this much salt is to expel most of the fluids and contents. So you might be saying, well, why isn't this guy just throwing these blood worms in a bag, you know, sealing it and throwing them in the freezer? Well, that's a great question. Um, reason why you're not supposed to freeze these guys straight up is the liquid inside of them, blood, water, you know, other different, you know, forms of liquid ends up crystallizing when you freeze it. When you crystallize uh, that inside content, when they thaw, they're real mushy and they're, they, they don't stay on the hook as well. So that's one of the main reasons why we are not just throwing them straight into the freezer. Um, you can do that. I've done that with some that I've, you know, accidentally let sit in the, you know, fridge for a few too many days. But, um, if you want to do it a way that's really going to preserve them and make them the best bait you can use in that winter time, I mean, just take the extra step of, you know, uh, adding a little bit of salt to them, but I'm going to spare you me separating all these and then we'll move on to step number two. All right, so just cold out all the worms that were in there. Um, they're actually not in bad shape. It's actually a sin. I don't have the time right now to use some of them uh, fresh, but um, that's just, you know, how fishing is sometimes with time and you know how it could be. But, uh, let you know, before we get to this next step, all I'm doing is trying to cull out most of the grass. Uh, it's never going to be perfect because the seagrass is so... Uh, thick honestly and entwined with most of these worms it won't affect the freezing process if you keep it like that uh, I keep you know if there's a little bit on there um, but next step would be to salt them all right now we talked about using the right type of salt and uh, there's a reason why now when you salt them and it's gonna make the bait a lot tougher and it'll stay on the hook much easier so what I'm doing right now is spreading it but now if you notice they start to kind of really wiggle around now that's just their natural reaction to salt um, the next key is to put these um, <clears throat> put these worms into the fridge for about an hour after you salt them so right now what we're doing we're going to throw them in the fridge for about an hour and we'll come right back. All right. So right now we're waiting. We just put the worms back in the fridge um, for about an hour or so. What that's going to do, that salt that we just add is going to dry them out a little bit. Um, if you did notice when I was adding the salt, they kind of expelled some of their bowels and other uh, excrements, I guess you would say. Um, after about an hour or so, what we're going to do is pull them out, pat them down, dry any of them off, get all that fluid or liquid off of them, and then we're going to individually bag them um, for the freezer. So one of the big things that you got to look into when you are doing that is decide how many you want to bag per bag. Because one of the issues you could run into is if you put too many in a bag, and you're pulling it out of the freezer to use and then you're putting it back in that thaw and refreeze and thaw doesn't really help to keep the bait tough um, so what I like to do I bag them in a half dozen and a dozen um, you know th those are the two numbers that I usually use pretty well like if it's a short trip I could probably go through a half dozen blood worms if it's a longer trip I usually bring a dozen but it, you know it's up to you and how you see yourself using them but like I was saying, you just want to make sure you don't put too many in one bag because then if you're putting them back in the freezer, they might lose their integrity and the toughness. But we're going to go uh, grab something to eat. We'll be back in about an hour. 
All right, so um, just pulled them out of the free, uh, the fridge. As you can tell, there's kind of blood splattered everywhere. Uh, if you could, I don't know if you really could tell from the uh, GoPro, but you know this is soaked and damp. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, why did you throw them in the fridge, and why didn't you just freeze them? Well, if you put the salt, like I said earlier, that's the salt on them, they start to expel all of their, you know, fluids. So if I just salted them, threw them in a bag, and then threw them in the freezer, they would end up, you know, crystallizing, and that fluid would end up freezing, coating them. And that's the last thing I wanted to do. Um because I want to be able to preserve these guys. So the next step is the last one pretty much other than throwing it in the freezer. So in this step, all we're going to do, take paper towels and just pat them dry to try and get off as much moisture as we can. After that, we're going to put one more layer of salt on top of them, just a, a, a little bit, just to, you know, add a little bit. You can never go wrong with too much salt. And then after that, we're just going to bag them and throw them in the freezer. All right, now I'm just ripping off a paper towel and just gently patting them dry. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I'm going old school with the Ziploc bags. I'm not using, um, you know, food uh, vacuum seal freeze, freezing bags. I'm just going to use your regular, you know, great value Walmart brand you know, sandwich bags. And what I do, actually, let me real quick before I throw uh what I do after I pat them dry, we're just going to add that last layer of salt. And that's just going to be just to really preserve them. Now, um, the big key with these that I love is they, they're much tougher and they stay on the hook so much better. And, you know, that could be very key when you're fishing in heavy current. You don't want your bait getting ripped off. But right there, just count out a few. And then all I'm going to do, seal the bag and stack them over here and throw them in the freezer. All right, so the last step... Now that we have them bagged, I'm just getting all the air out and then sealing it. Now, uh, I failed to mention this earlier. When you are adding the salt, you definitely don't want to be somewhere uh, that can't get dirty because um, when you put that much salt on bloodworms, what ends up happening, they, you know, some of them will actually explode right away and you have blood just splatter everywhere. And if you're like me, you don't want to, you know, piss off your wife. You don't want her to ask you why there's blood sp uh, splattered everywhere on your nice couch. So make sure you're doing it in like a garage or somewhere outside where, you know, it's not going to mess up the house. But, uh, I mean, this is, I'm telling you, the best way to preserve them, in my opinion. I, I learned it from an old timer, and he's been doing it for, you know, 50 years. So we end up getting six seven bags of bait that'll get us through you know seven trips this this winter and hopefully uh hopefully we'll use them all up but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video um as always leave a comment down below let me know what you thought um if you're not a subscriber please click that subscribe button i promise you will not regret it i'll see you guys soon